Mix them up, let's start the show. We're digging in with Trey. 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 We're digging in with Trey today. Yeah. Well, with Tampa winning last night, uh, a clinical game seven, one nothing shutout. What a final we have starting Monday. Whew. It's going to be a doozy. One for the ages. And um, all the great candidates, I want to award a shovel. Really, it's cumulative for the first three rounds. This guy, anybody that knows, we're both Harvard compadres. Uh, we are, full disclosure, dear friends. But he checks every box. You look at uh, the NHL lead in the postseason for points and goals, boom, he's right there hovering near the top, Alex Kalorn. But let's just talk about his last two home games. Pivotal game five, he and his line mates, Captain Steven Stamkos, Anthony Sorelli, they set the tone right from the get-go. And then last night, he was physical. He hit with impact, cleanly with a purpose. Uh, It was his unselfish change. Uh, that led to Yanni Gord shorthanded starting his shift on time and scoring the only goal in the hockey game. And then uh, as Semyon Varlamov, the New York Islanders' fine goalie, had been pulled, did you see the heavy lifting that Alex the Killer Kalorn did below the goal line to ensure the victory 200 feet away from his net and his uh, stellar goalie, Andre Vasilevsky? All these reasons, he absolutely is deserving. He's a Conn Smythe candidate, to be completely frank. Uh, So he gets, through three rounds, my dig-in shovel. We're going to talk to him momentarily, thanks to the great people, our longtime now presenting sponsor, Great Dane Trailers, greatdane.com. Speaking of heavy lifting, uh, the finest, the most sterling trailer manufacturer uh, in North America, bar none, greatdane.com. Family-owned, family-created, way back when in 1900, always on the front lines of engineering innovation, Uh, Any trailer needs you have, Great Dane hits it out of the park. Also, digintrip.com, we have a beautiful new huge Kaniac uh, t-shirt. It's a customized version. You're going to want to check that out and our ever-expanding merchandise line at digintrip.com. Without further ado, boy, am I very honored to. The shovel is being printed. It's on its way to Alex the killer Kalorn. Grew up a Montreal Canadian fan, and now he will play against the team he grew up watching. And boy, he's going to be a load to deal with come game one, Monday night. What a final it's going to be. You want to talk about mental toughness, drive, nothing's ever been handed to him. Very pleased now to award my shovel to Alex Kalorn. Killer, I'm so proud of you. But you know what? Like the way you play the game, let's cut right to the chase. You know, for a mature Stanley Cup championship team looking for your second, what's the locker room like right before uh, you hit the ice for a game seven like last night? Well, you know, there was definitely a calm to the room that, um, and I think that's because we're a team that's been in a few game sevens, but um, pretty, pretty, we understand what this group is capable of doing. And we knew that there was definitely a calm within the group that uh, if we went out and played our game the way we could play, we knew we could play. We think we, we liked our odds. So um, leading up to the game, I know there was you know, the, night, the night before, pretty nervous, coming to the game nervous. But once I got to the arena with all the guys, um, there was definitely a, a, a calm for sure. You, because you and I have a tendency to talk on game day. Uh, I can tell you're not a superstitious cat. Um, I want to ask you about one particular guy, because I think you, all your brothers on the team, I think you and Pat Maroon are particularly close to me. You go, I love this guy. You know, he's looking for his third Stanley Cup uh, ring consecutively. Does he or does anybody else, when it's calm in the room, killer, crack a joke? Oh, for sure. I think Pat is definitely one of those guys that uh, likes to keep the locker room loose. He doesn't want things to be too tense. People that know him know he's, he's kind of a jokester. Um, you know, it's nice to have that balance because there's obviously guys that 
like to be focused and dialed in, but, you know, to have a guy that's willing to keep things loose, um, especially in tense situations, I think is invaluable to a team. And Pat Maroon, you know, when you talk about the ultimate glue guy, um, Mm -hmm. he, he would say that about himself and he's willing to stand up for his teammates, protect his teammates. I know last night he was patrolling the red line, making sure, you know, um, they knew what they were going to be getting, uh, that night. So great guy, great team guy. You know, he has a heck of a set of hands in my opinion too. He does. Uh, he really does below the goal line, created a couple of great A's. Your fourth line was excellent last night. Now, before we get to your special team partner, I, you know, I don't want to get too Irish on you because my mom's right upstairs and she criticizes me for getting too Irish all the time. But you know, you, One of the reasons you're getting the shovel is nothing's ever been handed to you. You prove it over and over again. The bigger the game, the better you play. If there's any young aspiring hockey player that wants to locate self-belief in his or her abilities, Killer, what, what things would you make sure to emphasize to that young boy or girl? You know, it's difficult because a lot of, a lot of people, when they're looking to build teams, they look for, for big-time players and, and players that rise to the occasion. And I think when you look at our t- team, you got guys like Braden Point, um, Sorelli, who's always been a guy who's been able to score big goals, whether you go back to his junior career or even last year scoring the game winner in overtime against the Islanders. You think about Hedman, Kucherov. These are, and Vasilevsky is, has had a shutout in all the last uh, four of, of our elimination games. I think these are just big time players. And um, when you talk to kids, it's tough, but it's a process. You know, I don't think everyone's born with that, with that gene, but over time, if you work hard enough um, and you get put in these situations in big time games, you could kind of develop to be a player like that. But I do think some of it is some guys are just born with, with with that gamer mentality. And um, we definitely have a couple of those guys in our team. I think you have an abundance of them. Uh, Vasilevsky. Tell me about him uh, in terms of his personality. Obviously, all these shutouts and elimination games, he always bouncing back from a rare loss. I, 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 you know, as a former goaltender, not a very good one. I can admire him in a lot of ways, mechanically, physically. What makes him special mentally? Well, you know what? Vasilevsky, when I, ta- when I you know, I've played with some pretty competitive guys. You know, Marty St. Louis was definitely a huge competitor. But I, I think when I think about the, the biggest competitor, the most competitive guy I've ever played with, it, it has to be Vasilevsky. He's the guy that when you score him on, on him in practice, he's shooting pucks at your head because he's that angry about you scoring in practice. Um, you know, when you talk about hard work, I know with the, when he first got here, I don't even think he had a TV for the first three years because he was just at the arena or stretching in, in his room. And a lot of people, I think, say things like that about players, but he actually lives it. Um, competitive guy. I, I was actually just with him this morning. Uh, but when I say competitive, I, even after the game last night, they were talking about Carey Price, and I could tell in his head he, he he was getting a little fired up. And you love to see that in a goalie. And I think the greatest part about him is, you know what, he, he may be the best goalie in the world, and not every goalie is going to win every single game or have a shutout. But whenever he does not have a shutout or have a great game, he always comes back with an even better one. And that's huge. We obviously had the shutout, and you, in my view, I was analyzing the game, critical role on the only goal. Ryan McDonough, who is, I mean, a true horse right now, does the heavy lifting on the penalty kill, and it's you who makes the change for Yanni Gord. You know, you always desire to leave a guy coming on the ice in a position to succeed, and you did that for Yanni. What do you remember about the change? Because yeah, it was critical. Well, first off, you talked about Ryan McDonough, and I think I, I'd have to say something about him. Um, someone that definitely goes, I don't want to say unnoticed, but a little bit under the radar when you have certain stars on our team like we do. But when you talk about guys that are um, pivotal to our team, guys that block shots, um, make huge plays that kind of go unnoticed and aren't on the highlight package every night, Ryan McDonough is that. And, and in the locker room, huge leader for us. Um, really just happy to be a guy that I've played with for the past couple of years and become friends with, but um, he makes that whole play happen. And for, uh, for me, I had been on just for, for, I don't know how long, but I figured 
Mac made a great play to get me the puck. I could have dumped it in. I saw Sorelli still had some jump, so I wanted to give him the puck. Um, not thinking anything of it, went for a change, because I know once Yanni Gore comes in, he can really help with the forecheck. He's kind of an energizer bunny. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, once he got on the ice, you know, Sorelli makes a great play on the power play. I know the Islanders, they haven't given up, I don't think a PK goal the entire year. I saw a stat because um, they do play so well defensively, but Sorelli was able to find a hole. Um, and, and like I said, like on and off the stick from Yanni Gord, you know, moving goalies have holes. And um, I was happy he got on off the stick and huge relief. I didn't get a plus though. That sucked, but. Well, you sure deserved it. Okay. So. <laughs> I'm and, just kidding. No, but you did. Hey, listen. The bottom, I, I should be your Jerry Maguire, but at, at, at the end of the day, killer, uh, NBC showed a great reaction of your bench. And I didn't look at you closely because you've just finished your shift with a purpose. Uh, I was gassed. You're getting your heart rate. Did, did you see it? Did you see it I happen? Or? I, I didn't see it happen. Um, I just got off the ice. I was trying to catch my breath and then, you know, it happened so quickly. So I, I didn't actually see it. I was kind of catching my breath. Okay, so one other um, absolute uh, epitomizing moment of digging in. Below the goal line, it's got to be a minute left or somewhere hovering right around that. I think less than a minute. And you drew, I want to say, three Islanders. And you probably were uh, the cause for 15, 20 seconds going off the clock. Uh, it was phenomenal. Like, what are you trying to do? I mean, that's brute strength. I mean, these are yeah. the little things that get you the shovel beyond the points, uh, Mike and Padre. Yeah. Well, I'll say Goodrow did a good job right before me. I, he did. I remember seeing he got in on the four, well, on, in on the four check, and I think he had like four guys on him. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just a will thing for them. They're trying to kind of pick at the puck because they know that once they get it, they can kind of go on a rush. Um, I think in those moments, you just have to try to barrel the guy over. But, um, you know, at the end of games, me, Sorelli, and Gidro have typically been the line um, that goes on. And, you know, I, I knew there was probably a minute left. If I could take five seconds off the clock, you know, 10 seconds, those are huge seconds, knowing that they probably will get another couple looks just because there's a minute left and they have an extra guy on the ice. Yeah, you know, I didn't travel this year. No broadcasters did. And obvious, I called the games remotely in the second round, you and the Hurricanes. Last night seemed to be particularly loud in the building is that accurate yeah i think the the tampa fans wanted to to, to outdo the islander fans it seemed like because in my nine years uh being in tampa playing in some pretty big games you know we've played a game seven game against washington uh at home you know stanley cup finals against chicago that was definitely the, the loudest i've ever heard the arena by far it was awesome it, it, it really seemed it. I'm glad to hear you validate uh, that. Um, how, what's the biggest, aside from the obvious things, you win your first Stanley Cup in the bubble, first Toronto, and then venturing out to Edmonton to beat Dallas. As we return to normalcy, what are the biggest differences in the journey um, in this postseason in comparison to the bubble, other than the things that would you know pop off the page initially? Yeah, I mean – when, you, when I think about the bubble, the bubble was tough, more, more so tough mentally than anything. When you're doing the same thing every day, um, it just becomes monotonous. Every day you're eating the same meals, you're, you're staying in the same room, you're walking to the arena, you're never getting outside. Mentally, it was tough. But um, I think this year, it's a little bit different in the sense that the travel is a little bit more difficult. You know, when you're playing seven game series, you're going back and forth those last three games. Um, that could weigh on a team. Um, but for us, team-wise, you know, the game is very same. We're trying to do all the same things. And I think last night um, was a good way to show how we can play. Like, when you, when you need to win a game to play defensively, like the way we did, and to allow as little chances as we did, I think that um, shows how great certain teams are. And when you need a big game like that, that's great. Amen. You know, especially because your previous home game where you, oh, you, Stephen Stamkos and Sorelli were terrific. You had three points, I believe, you know, so you can win in different ways. And that's obviously yeah. the sign of a, a, an elite team. Now, you didn't have a power play last night. I, in Carolina, which had, you know, they, their kill had been very, very good. And they ran into, I think, the best power play in hockey. And 
I've always heard my old friend, and I won't ask for any trade secrets to be revealed because Jeff Halpern would kill me. But I've always heard, Killer, that it's a, it's a true partnership. It's, you know, you want the players to take ownership of the man advantage. And I love watching your power play click. It's as good of a power play as I've seen in recent memory. And I think stacks up against the elite ones that I think of at, at any time. Uh, what are those meetings like? And tell me about, am I on to something with a, with yeah. they give you ownership? For sure. And I think it, it probably varies from team to team, but when you have certain guys like Kucherov, Stamkos, Hedman, um, guys that have been in the league so long, Kucherov who studies tape uh, so much, like, you know, after before and after the game, Halpern is a great a power play coach because he gives us that ownership and that, you know what, if Cooch sees something differently, he'll tell him in the meeting and right there he'll be like, okay, well, that's the way it is. You see it on the ice. But um, he gives us the right structure, especially the breakouts coming up the ice. That's things that players don't think of as much in zone. Those are things we kind of try to break down, um, especially Cooch. So I think it's great when you – and Mar I remember when Marty St. Louis was here, he, he pretty much ran the power play meetings. Um, so you want to have players have that ownership because they're the ones that are out there seeing it. So, um, but he's been great. I'll be good stuff. You know, and I'm glad you're a great admirer of yours. Uh, my dear friend, Rob Brindamore would be very happy that you mentioned power play entries because he and I rarely have disagreements. And at one point I thought about, and I'm not going to go specifics, but I thought about plugging a certain guy into the first unit. He said, well, what's going to happen with the entry trip. And so nobody thinks of it. Now, once you get in zone, Generally speaking, Killer, how much would you say is preset and how much is, Jeff, the ability for you to be spontaneous with, with what you do and how you distribute the puck? Well, for me personally, our power play. Uh, for your power play. For our power play, it's all spontaneous. I mean, there's certain there, – and that's what, that's what I think makes our power play so good is that um, – a lot of power plays have set plays and when it doesn't go right, then you're kind of stuck. Whereas we just kind of give Cooch the puck and say, you know, find whoever you want to find. There's four guys that you can find, do your thing. Um, and when you have a guy like that, I mean, best half wall guy I've ever played with uh, might be one of the best half wall guys that's ever played. Um, just sees the game a little bit differently. So um, for me personally, there's certain things I know I'm going to do when I get the puck. Um, and it kind of helps my process going through certain looks and like a quarterback has his, you know, has his different looks and it, it, it comes kind of natural now, but um, we try to be very spontaneous. And I think if you look at our goals, you know, Stamkos, I think only has one, one time or power play goal. And yeah. um, that's typically a look that we would use often. So there's a lot of different looks that we can, we can have, which is great. You have that unpredictability. I want to ask one more question about you specifically in a second, but Kucherov, this guy, I mean, I, he seems to me with his hockey IQ to be a true professor. Uh, you know, you played with him, I believe, when you won an, an American League championship, a Calder Cup in the, in the AHL. Was there one moment, Alex, where you said, holy cow, Nikita Kucherov has an elite Mount Everest-like hockey IQ? I mean, when he did that, uh, when he scored that goal, the shootout goal in Buffalo. I don't know if you remember the play where he kind of did like the fake shot. It, it was just something yes. that he'd come up with. And we had seen him do that in practice. And that just shows you the way his mind worked. No one else would think about doing that. He basically passes the puck to the goalie, but finds a way to, to sneak it through his five hole with a fake shot. No one else would think about doing that, but that's just the way he sees the game. He understands what the goalie thinks. And for me, I, he's taught me so much. Um, just being on the power play with him, the way defenders move their sticks, when a guy starts to, to cross over this way, put the puck that way, and little things like that that a lot of guys may not see, he sees it. Interesting. Now, you had a beautiful redirection in game five. I'm going to ask you again, because, you know, this is the time where all these young, aspiring uh, boys and girls that have dreams of, of chasing their dreams on the ice, Tipping's a big part of it. You have to be willing to get to the hard areas, which you always do. But if you had to put together a Cliff Notes version of Alex Kalorn tipping 101, what would be in the pamphlet? 
the best way to, to tip pucks and score a goal is pretend you're playing goalie. Because if you put, if you pretend you're playing goalie, you're going to take away the goalie's eyes. That's first and foremost. And then you just want to be loose with your hands. I mean, it, I've, I've gotten better at it and it's because I've worked at it. I mean, I think probably every, every practice or every other practice I, before practice starts, I'll be tipping pucks with Hedman or Sergeyev. And it's just getting those, those reps in. Um, and it just becomes natural once you go on the ice and you're not thinking about it as much. Uh, Hedman, uh, I have the utmost respect for your uh, color analyst, Brian Anglon. I learned a lot from him. He's a salt of the earth guy. And he said there was a point within the last couple of years in his view where Hedman went from shooting to get shots through Alex to shooting to score. Do you agree? And what's the difference? You're the perfect guy to ask with your net yeah. in front. Well, Hedman is a guy that since I've been here has definitely taken his game, improved his game the most. I think when you think about when I first nine years ago um, was a great defenseman, but now he's become arguably the best defenseman in, in the world. So uh, I, and I think a lot of it comes with confidence, right? When you, he's had some good seasons, ones that when won the con Smythe last year. And like you said, trying to get shots through now he tries to, to get shots in the score. And I think with him, he, he can rely so much on his legs, even if a shot gets blocked or something, that he knows that he'll be able to get back um, and stop the guy from, you know, getting to the net or whatever. So when you have that much ability with your skating, um, you could take some some risks in the offensive zone. Off the beaten path, I know he's got either he's in, in route two or has his pilot's license. Have you ever been in the cockpit airborne with him? I haven't, but I know that's that's something that he – he talks about a lot. Um, it's a passion of his. I know when we were in the bubble, I went to his room. It was all blacked out, and he had the simulator going. So he was landing in St. Bart's or something. I guess they got a crazy little landing strip there. Um, and uh, it, it's just kind of cool to see what other guys' interests are. He, he has a huge interest in soccer. He can name you any soccer player that's ever played in any league. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, he's a pretty interesting guy. That's a tough runway, St. Bart's. Uh, St. Yeah. Martin, St. Martin down there is very tough too. Would you trust him? Like I, I've always said in Carolina over the years, you know, that I want to be the color analyst uh, slash the pilot. And would the would the boys trust me after the game if I said quality victory, guys? We should have a smooth flight back to Raleigh. If if it was if it was seventy seven headmen up there in the cockpit and said that, would you trust him uh, at the helm? I would trust. I would trust Hetty knowing. Knowing him and knowing how much uh, he, how much time he would put into making sure we were all safe, um, I would definitely trust Hedman. Killer, by the way, I have my Harvard Varsity Club hat here. My dad, God rest his soul. I remember he was a big fan of Lox. He sponsored hockey in Detroit. He was a big fan of Lox St. Louis, an elite program that you played for outside of Montreal. You're going to take on the Habs now, their first cup since 93. Master the obvious question, were you a big Montreal Canadian fan growing up? Yeah, I was. Um, it, it, it's tough to grow up in Montreal and not be a huge Canadians fan. Growing up, uh, you know, I remember going to the Bell Centre, the atmosphere. Still gives me chills to this day going, going back there and playing. Um, I remember watching, you know, Saku Koivu, who was the captain when I was kind of a young fan and I actually got to play against them, so that was pretty cool. And he was in was in Anaheim, but um, hockey it, it's different in Montreal. And I think um, how loyal their fan base are. It's funny because I get texts from all my buddies now, um, and they're huge. They've been Lightning fans, but I, I I I don't think they're rooting for the Tampa Bay Lightning in, in this series just because of um, how they grew up. And, and I don't blame them for that, but um, definitely a loyal fan base. And, and I'm happy for them to, to to be in the finals. Honestly, they're the, the the city has been going crazy and um, it'll make it that much more exciting. Do you know there is a guy in the Montreal Canadiens right now and I'll never forget calling the game. Montreal had a great team. They were up to nothing and Saku Poivu got high sticked in the second period by Justin Williams. No call on the play. Yeah. Roddy Brindamore tied it in the third and yeah. Eric, Sc Eric Stahl scored on the power play and over. That was the most critical victory of the 16 Carolina had to win the – you weren't at that game, were you? No, I was not. Yeah, but I remember it. Yeah. 
and Saku Koivu, and he was out for the series. Oh, what a player he was. Was he your favorite Canadian? Yeah, he was my favorite Canadian growing up. I mean, I had his jersey. I, I'd wear, it, you know, when you're a big fan, when you're kind of like 8, 9, 10, 12, whatever, that age range when hockey is everything and you're obsessed with, with the Canadians. As you get older and you play at a different level and you get drafted, you kind of lose that allegiance. But he was definitely uh, my favorite player. But they have such a storied franchise with players. And the list goes on and on with, yeah. with guys and class acts that have played for that organization. Well, what a final it's going to be. You know, it's another guy in that Hurricanes team, a former Diggin guest, uh, Hall of Famer Mark Recchi. He would swim the oceans for his dear friend, Saku Boy. Yeah. And that's good enough for me. Uh I believe your dad and your uncle are down in T-Bay right now. You're hoping to get your mom down. Will they yeah. be able to take in the games uh, uh, up in Montreal as well? Yeah, so my dad and my uncle, they're, uh, they're probably swimming in the pool right now, but um, they'll, uh, they'll stay in Tampa. They're not going to go back and forth. My mom, um, my, my sister just had a baby in Toronto, so they're going to try to make some games in, in Montreal and hopefully at some point get them down in Tampa. But I think – the, my uncle and dad, the old guys here, are um, enjoying Tampa life too much. The, they, they're not going back north yet. Well, hopefully, there, hopefully there are no Speedos in that Killorn pool. <laughs> Congratulations to your sister, boy or girl? Uh, girl. Name? Um, Olivia. Great name. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I am, uh, I'm going to send you on your way on this Saturday, but I did see something recently, Doc Talk which is through the stratosphere, just an astoundingly uh, good podcast uh, that you started, what, maybe 15 months ago, ballpark right yeah. around then. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, you know, you, you got to know uh, Super Bowl champion, Rob Gronkowski, Tom Brady. First of all, I saw you had Gronkowski on the ice as a goaltender. What kind of goalie is he? He, he's actually a pretty good goalie. He's not scared of the puck, which if you've never played goalie, some guys can be scared. We were just worried because Vasilevsky's pads weren't big enough and he had nothing on, he had no knee pads or anything. It was just skin. And yeah. me and Stamkos didn't want to take a one-timer off the inside of his knee. Um, but yeah, he, he was actually pretty good. Do you, because you become not only friendly with Gronk, but Tom Brady, um, do you, ever confer with those guys about um the mental approach because that's even though sports are different that's you know that's something that the, the mental part of it is the difference maker in whatever sport you play yeah i mean i talked to gronk quickly about it he's he's a very you know not like a t very serious guy in the sense that he's kind of very loose all the time but um you can tell when it's game time for him, he, he turns on the switch and, and he's ready to play. Um, but I wouldn't say we talk in depth about, about those kind of things. We're kind of just, you know, hanging out, talking other stuff other than sports. Uh, being around Tom Brady, just, you know, I guess just casually, what is, is there anything that's jumped off the page to you that you admire in one of the greatest athletes of all the time? Yeah. I mean, for him, and we haven't spent a ton of time, but, uh, you know, the way he goes about his business and the way he takes care of himself um, is pretty astounding. To be doing what he's doing at the age he's doing it at, um, I think all of us as, as athletes would, would love to be in a position to do that. Um, and to know that most of it has come because of hard work um, and, and, and commitment to taking care of himself uh, makes it even that much better. So... Um, we were excited to get him here in Tampa. And then once we won and they won, hopefully things could kind of follow that lead again. Yeah. I think that every athlete on planet earth wants to <laughs> somehow through osmosis, get to the area and start elevating their game. Uh, the last thing Montreal has some Stanley cup champions, the likes of Eric Stahl. I mentioned Joel Edmonds and Tyler Toffoli, but your team won the Stanley Cup last year. Is there anything tangibly you can take from the experience against the Dallas Stars that will benefit you here against Montreal starting Monday? I think it's just understanding, understanding the ups and downs of the series. I think, you know, regardless of what happens in a game, um, 
it's how you respond. And I think with Dallas, we lost game one against Dallas. We ended up winning the next three. Um, and, and even more so throughout games, um, being even keel is the most important part. Whether they score, you score, um, just understanding that, you know, maintaining your emotions is such a big part of it. Um, and last night was a, was a good way to show that. Alex, I'll tell you what, I'm very, very um, proud of you. You, you're a straight shooter. Like I've said, the bigger the game, the better you play. Uh, you're an unselfish team first guy. Uh, shovel is on the way. Good luck in the final. Um, yeah, thanks and gratitude to Marty San Luis. You know, even with our Harvard connection, he deserves a lot of credit in the locker room on the road in Raleigh years ago that introduced the two of us. Get it done in the final. Thanks for doing this and uh, keep playing shovel in hand, partner. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Trip. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We're digging in with Trip today. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Today, yeah, today.